everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome back to my sewing room. I do want to apologize about my voice today, I'm getting over a cold so this is what I sound like. And it's also kind of the reason behind this dress in a day project, as you could probably tell by the title of this video. So yes, I am going to be attempting to make an 1840s dress in a day, and in fact it's going to be a lot less of a day because it's two o'clock right now and I'm seeing a show tonight at 7 30. So we're going to try to do this dress super super quickly and I might do it after the show as well if I haven't finished it by then. The good thing about this is that it is a miniature dress. So yes, I am making an 1840s doll dress. This is part of the Jane Eyre pattern from Pemberley Threads, which I will link down below in the description. And it's because my doll Yvette, I just feel like needed some more clothes. So here we all are making another doll dress. I'm probably going to space these in like after every couple larger projects as I've kind of been doing on this channel because they're just kind of a nice little break for me. I'll either be doing like a doll dress or just kind of like an easy daily wear type dress that, uh, you know, doesn't take too much brain power. And I love the fact that with doll dresses, you don't have to fit them. And that is why they are at least relatively easy to do in a short amount of time. So I have already spent the morning cutting out the pieces of fabric. So all of those are already cut out. We've got all these tiny little pieces here. And ideally, I would like to get the dress done today and maybe make a bonnet tomorrow, which would also be part of this video. So hopefully we can get all of that done. The bonnets I do find are harder than the dresses just because it's so fiddly to work on something that small. But I do have the the bonnet pattern that goes with this as well, so I figure, por que no las dos? So let's go ahead, I haven't even looked at the directions yet, so for these types of like print at home patterns, which is what this is, I don't actually print out the directions, I just put my laptop up and that way I save a lot of paper, save a lot of ink, and I just print out the actual pattern pieces, cut those out and tape them together. And the nice thing also about doll patterns is that there's a lot less taping together than there are in a human size pattern. So I'm going to go ahead, pull up the directions and let's go through them step by step. So this is the fabric that I'm working with. I found this at Joann's and I thought it would look really cute for 1840s. I wanted something kind of in the blue range. And then this is the lace trim that I'm going to be using. This is not quite as wide as the lace that's supposed to be with this pattern. It's supposed to be 5 eighths inches wide. This is really more like a half inch. So the first step is to base this lace in place along the neckline. I'm actually going to scoot it down an eighth of an inch so that it doesn't match up with the edge. And I think that will do a better job of like being able to show the the lace once I go and attach the lining because then I'll lose a quarter inch from the lining up here and this lace honestly has a nice border but because of the way this pattern goes together you put the lace here and then and the lace here and then separately you put it on the back because it's a tight angle right here I think that's why it doesn't continue because this lace doesn't really like bend that way like you would need a gather in the lace to be able to make it bend so yeah I'm gonna do the lace like it says in the pattern instructions we'll see I might deviate from the instructions for some other things but that is my lace from my stash and once that is on then it's time to do the pleats because this is like a pleated fan front bodice so I think you can see the little pink marks that I've made that denotes all of the pleats along with the zigzags down here at the bottom I didn't draw in the full lines but I'm just going to pleat these up like this. I think there's four of the pleats total on each side and pleat those and stitch those in place. I decided that it would be easier if I actually draw in the stitch line. So I had this dot already marked. This one I just made more obvious, but it was like you can follow the zigzag cuts of the bottom and I just drew a line between them. And now I'm going to stitch that line, then do the same thing for the next one and the next one and the next one. I haven't drawn those lines yet. I'll just draw them in right before I stitch them. All right, so as you can see, I've done quite a bit now. I did all of my little pleats here, so you can see all the tiny little pleats. It definitely makes it pretty thick here in the front. And then I also seamed the two together at the center front. You press all of the pleats away from the center, by the way. At first I pressed them towards because then it would make this shape even with like the outer portion, but um, that's not what you're supposed to do because then when I read it again, it said press them outwards. So I repressed them. I do feel like this is allowing for quite a bust, which I mean, dolls don't have. So that's kind of a little bit odd 
Do you see the volume on there? But hopefully it will look good on her. And then I also did the side back seams right here. So I did these slightly differently than the instructions because they said to like stay stitch this and then clip it and then sew it. I didn't read that far into it until after I'd already pinned it and I didn't feel like redoing it and honestly this worked just fine and I find that when you have a gentle curve like this you can just press the seam up away from the curve so you can see how I've pressed it this way and that means that it will press smoothly without having to clip into it at all so that is what I've done for both of these. So now we're going to take all of our little marks here on the shoulder of the front pieces and we are going to please them up so that they match the back piece that we're going to attach. We're just doing the shoulders, we're leaving the side seams open for now. And here we go, this is the bodice all put together. You can see our little pleats up there at the shoulder seam. So now we are going to set that aside and we are going to work on sleeves. Naturally I decided to choose the really difficult sleeve because I'm a glutton for punishment, but I thought it looked really cute. So this one has an upper sleeve, a lower sleeve, and a cuff. And we are going to start by running gathering stitches along the top and the bottom of the lower sleeve portion so it's slightly more fitted on the top and then it is poofy down at the bottom of the sleeve and then it gets gathered into the cuff. So I have all of my gathering stitches done. I also ran the gathering stitches here and actually even on the skirt portion even though that's way down in the directions but I figured I had my machine set up for it and now what's happening is that the lower sleeve is getting pinned and then sewn to the upper sleeve so they go together like this. So I actually added these marks right here. I think they will be very, very helpful. I did find them very helpful on this sleeve. So I do recommend adding some little notches at the centers, but you just pull up the gathering stitches here and attach these right sides together like that. And that is what will look like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew all of that and I'll be back with you with the next step. So I do feel like this next part is a little bit confusing. And to be honest, I also kind of skipped a couple steps that I am just not planning to do on this one. But okay, first off, you're gonna fold one side of the cuff quarter inch. So that's really simple. Then once this is together, first you press the seam up towards the upper sleeve. That's all fine and dandy. Then it says that you should stitch that in place either by hand or by machine. I'm skipping that step because I feel like the press really does a nice job and I don't need it. It also then says to finish this edge right here, both edges, with either the serger or with a zigzag on the machine. My serger is still in the shop and I don't feel like three threading my brother's serger, which is kind of annoying to do. So I am just gonna leave this raw. I think it'll be fine. This fabric, as you can tell, is really not fraying so badly, so uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, it will be just fine. Um, so I may or may not do a zigzag on the skirt finishing when we get to there, just because it's such a long space that it could maybe have some fraying issues, but I am not going to be finishing off anything on the bodice or sleeves. Okay, so that's the first bit. Then what you're going to do is you're going to fold in a quarter inch just on this little lower portion of the lower sleeve and you're going to pin this in place to the cuff except the cuff is going to stick out a quarter inch so you see how that goes past there. I also went and added the extra middle marks on both of these pieces to help distribute the gathers a little better but you're going to pull up the gathers and pin everything in place and then stitch here to sew that all together. So after pressing that seam right there you are just going to flip up the edges here on the cuff and then sew a tiny little seam right across right there and then turn that right sides out so that you have a nice finished edge. Press the edge down here and now the edge of the sleeve is kind of finished but we do need to probably hand sew is my guess this edge right down right here. Now that said it is now four o'clock so I've been working on this for almost exactly two hours. And I feel like this hand sewing point is kind of a good stopping point or pausing point because I need to go walk lion and I also need to make dinner. So I'm gonna go do both of those and the hand sewing, come back hopefully in an hour to do about an hour, maybe hour and a half more of sewing before going off to the show tonight. So. Hopefully I can get a bunch done during that time, but I'm starting to feel a little doubtful.
Also, if you were hearing noises in that last little clip, that's because Dora came into the room, so I figured she'd probably want to say hi. And even if she doesn't want to say hi, I know you guys want to say hi to her. And now she's allowed back in the room again because Barbie isn't out and she doesn't have anything to destroy. And in fact, that sound was Lion, so I'm gonna go give Lion a walk. We will be back shortly. So my dinner and walking Lion and hand sewing break took way longer than I anticipated, but this is now hand sewn. I have about 15 minutes left before I have to leave for the show. So the next thing that happens is that the sleeves, the shoulder seam of the sleeves, get sewn into the arm's eye of the bodice. And then I think we move on to the lining. We don't yet close up the side seam here. So I'm going to set these sleeves in, show you what that looks like, and then start on the lining. The exterior bodice now has its sleeves attached. And you can see that like the bottom portion here is basically already finished. And I think that's because we're putting some sort of extra closure on here so that it doesn't like get sewn closed around the wrist because it'll be too tight but now I am on to the lining I've just marked my darts on here and pinned them in place unfortunately I am out of time so when I get back from the show I will hopefully come in and finish this we shall see all right, the lining is now sewn together. I showed you when I had pinned the darts earlier, but the backs were done just like the outer backs were done, like they're the exact same pieces. And then I didn't have to worry about pleats at the shoulder or those pleats here, just the dart. So the rest of it was really quite simple to put together. So the one other thing that does happen with here is that it gets stay stitched just inside the quarter inch seam allowance. And now I'm going to clip these and press them to the inside. And then this is all going to get sewn into the outer bottom bodice and we're going to sew it by going around the neckline area and then like down the back openings I think just to where this little pink dot is right there and then it gets separated probably because it has to incorporate into the skirts but uh yeah we're gonna go ahead and touch it all together now okay you probably caught this before I did I knew something looked weird when I was tracing the neckline and it didn't look even and then I realized that's because I sewed the shoulder seam to the neckline of the back so um yeah this is the shoulder seam and this is the arm side look how weird this arm side would be so uh whoops gonna get the seam ripper out pick that out and redo the actual shoulder seam and the stay stitching down here oh by the way it's 10 30 and yeah that's probably why I'm making these mistakes I got back just after 10 to start sewing again so we're gonna see how far I get by like about midnight so I have just stitched those edges together right sides together I've also clipped all of my corners and I've also clipped into each of the seam because you know you're supposed to clip your curves and these are really more like corners to be honest so I've clipped all of those and I also did right sides together on the bodice lining only for the side seam I haven't pressed that one yet but I did do that so after pressing it then what happens is I'm going to stay stitch along the bottom of the lining so that that can get turned up kind of like how I did the sleeves here the arm size here and then I get to stitch the sleeve so basically we are going to do right sides together right here all the way down and all the way from the like point right above the cuff here where I said that it would stop all the way down through the bodice on both sides then we have to kind of puzzle this out to figure out how to turn it right sides out all right now that everything is like attached and pressed we are going to see if we can turn this through the lining without getting confused so Okay, I think we need to turn the sleeve right side out first. Okay, and the other one. Oh, this is looking really cute. I like these funny sleeves. And then I've already pressed the neckline. I did that right after I did the lining side seams. So I have pressed that. I might need a little bit more like at the corners because you can kind of see the lining just coming up a little bit on the edge there. But I think it blends pretty well with the lace. I also kind of wish that I'd started the lace even farther down because I feel like it lost kind of that top bit on the curve and I would have liked to have seen that on the exterior. Like we get to see it right here. But here is this. And then from the inside, we have this. Oh, but actually, it looks like the instructions have me not turn the sleeve in right side out yet. So I'm going to turn these sleeves back this way because this area here 
where everything was folded down before, that is going to get whip stitched down by hand over this seam area here to hide that seam allowance. So that is actually the next step is hand whip stitching all of that down in place and then we will move on to the skirts. Okay so first off as you can see the arm size are all stitched down by hand now everything looks nice and neat and then over here I have started on the skirt. I told you I had already done the gathering stitches up here but I did actually wind up doing an overcasting stitch on my machine so I don't remember exactly which one I used but it's the ones that go with foot G if you have a brother machine that's how you know and then I did this back seam as well. So the skirt is all just one piece. So now what happens is I'm going to pull up the gathering stitches but I'm also going to run stay stitches on the exterior of the bodice. I'm not really sure why we didn't do this like at the same time as the other one but we need stay stitches on here as well. A little note about something that I would change. If you remember it had us sew the bodice lining to the bodice outer only to this point and left this unconnected and then it had us put the skirt on and the skirt is now attached to the bodice but now it's like okay go back and turn this part inside out and sew that bit no that's that's silly it should have all been done at once now what's gonna have to happen because I can't get in there because this is now stitched down this little fold so what's gonna have to happen is I'm just gonna have to whip stitch that when I go to whip stitch the bodice lining over the skirt so I believe that is the next step which is to make sure this is all folded up and whip stitch the bodice lining to the skirt like over this so that it encases all of the raw edges right here and I'm gonna do that kind of like overnight and talk to you again tomorrow morning because it is now 12 19 so I have been working on this little dress project here for what I think about like four and a half hours so not too bad for this so far and I think that other than the hand sewing of that there and then putting I think a little snap closure on here and on the back the only other thing that I have to do is the hem and then it'll be done so we'll finish this up pretty darn quickly tomorrow okay I haven't gone to bed yet I've actually spent the last 15 minutes minutes pressing up the hem which is a quarter turn and then a half inch turn and also getting this all pinned in place and ready to stitch in the morning so that way I can just do hand sewing in the morning and she will be all done. Well it took nearly an hour and a quarter of hand sewing but you can see all of that stitching is done all of the little snaps are done so we've got the three on the closure and then there's one on each of the wrists and the entire hem is done. I mean an hour and a quarter seems like a lot but it's a lot faster than a human sized dress so yay. So let's go ahead stick this on Yvette and we can see the finished dress. So here is the finished dress on Yvette. Just a little bit of like feedback of what I would do differently. I definitely think that wider lace would have been really nice on here because as you can see it's kind of trying to flip up a little just because it's too narrow really to like fully get around that edge there. I mean I can try pressing it more or maybe tack it down on the edges but it I think would have looked a lot better as wider lace. Uh, she also definitely could benefit from having the corded petticoat that goes with the 1830s set. I think this is intended to be worn over the corded petticoat. I haven't made that yet. So yeah, I think that would really help with skirt fullness. The other thing about this bodice, and this is true of like 1840s bodices in general, but they're meant to be very long. So I did find that to make this chest area not look weirdly puffy, you really do have to like pull it down to make sure that the waist is all the way down where it should be and therefore these gathers distribute really well. I also did think it was really interesting as I mentioned earlier I did not hand stitch this seam down which I think was intended to be stitched down and when I put on this sleeve it fit perfectly laid nicely looked exactly like that but this one the seam allowance tried to flip down instead and it made the sleeve actually look entirely different the puff was just totally wrong so I flipped it back up just like while she was wearing it and now it looks right but just a note on that I also should have made sure that I caught the outer fabric for this middle snap I did make sure on the bottom and the top I don't know why I didn't on the middle but as you can see the lining is coming over and that may be something else to note 
out. I've heard that these newer dolls are a little slimmer than like the older Pleasant Company dolls. This pattern might be a little bit tight to be honest on those older Pleasant Company dolls. So just something to keep in mind. But so far so good. So let's go ahead and make her a bonnet to match. I have three options that I'm liking for potential fabrics. One of them is actually behind her right now because it is using the leftover scraps from Aurora. I kind of like how it's picking up the purple in her flowers and then also has the blue, but it also might just be like a little too out there and you know totally not historically accurate for 1840s. Another option is this periwinkle. I'm not sure if this one is left over from Fairy Godmother or if this is left over from the natural form gown, but it's one of those. I feel like it's reading very gray on camera, but it is actually periwinkle and does go pretty nicely with this. It's just maybe a slightly more boring option. And the last option is this. It is shot silk and it's like blue green. So it's picking up kind of interesting, but it does pick up the green in here as well as the blue. And I'm kind of liking this option. I don't remember what it was from and it's my scrappiest scrappy. Like these are what I have. I'm pretty sure this is enough. You can really see how it's shot when it's laying flat on here in this light. But I do think that that would be kind of a cool option for her bonnet and something a little different. So I think we're gonna go ahead and use up these scrappy scrappy bits and make a bonnet out of them. So I've got my pieces cut out now and a couple of things that I'm going to change about this that I did with this bonnet right here, which is the 1830s bonnet that I made last fall to go with the 1830s dress, which really matches this beautifully. So it's kind of unfortunate that it is the totally wrong shape of a bonnet. But what I did with this one it, that is not in the pattern instructions is I actually wound up wiring this brim with millinery wire. So I'm going to do the same thing with this brim piece right here. That's what I'm going to literally do first is zigzag millinery wire along these edges here before I start putting things together. The other thing that I did that was very different about this one is that this pattern actually says to cut out a smaller buckram top than it is for like the silk. You can see that it's just the circle right there and then like wrap it but then just basically join the edges and there's no actual structure in there that's not how you do millinery so I showed this in that last video too which I'll link down below but basically I'm getting rid of that piece entirely and I'm cutting out or I already cut out the buckram and the silk out of this piece right here they're both going to get notched so that those notches can then get glued in to the crown piece here and then whip stitched around so that it actually provides structure in this tip of the bonnet. As you can see here, the brim now has the wire all zigzagged into place. Now what happens is we create kind of like a brim sandwich. So we have the piece of silk, the buckram, and then a second piece of silk, and that all gets whip stitched all along the edge here. I suppose you probably could also machine stitch it, except that we have the wire in there that we can't really see, or maybe even glue it, except that we are going to be putting binding over the top of that, and then you wouldn't be able to like sew on the binding, which is kind of what I'm hoping to do. So yeah, I think I'm gonna go ahead and just whip stitch it since it's pretty small, and hopefully that won't take long. This is not actually the next step in the pattern pieces. The next step in the pattern pieces is to do with the crown, but I have my doubts as to how they're being connected. So I'm actually like going out of order here and doing this first to make sure that this gets connected properly to this as in using like cuts of crenellations of the buckram and not just whipping fabric because I can't remember what it said to do on this but hi Dora but I definitely have the crenellations in here that are like up in the crown and that is how it is meant excuse me you stepped on my bonnet you know what that means Dora Dora that means you have to wear the bonnet no it does it you have to wear the bonnet now yeah, well, I don't think she's going to wear the bonnet. Okay, so actually I want to try something that is probably totally cheating, but oh well, I'm doing it anyway. And that is, I want to put the binding on and close this up at the same time. I have not yet whip stitched this. I just clipped it to keep all the layers together. I am a little worried about the fact that, like, there is only 
the silk right here and I feel like it's wanting to join cleanly at this buckram instead of cutting the buckram up and putting it on the inside of the crown so yeah a little worried about that but whatever we're too late now I literally don't have more of this fabric to cut more pieces so I also have cut my binding wider than it said in the pattern it said one inch binding I cut one and a half because I feel like I remember it being an issue that it was like too narrow really Dora too narrow on this one right here and I want to combat that by just making it wider to begin with. So I'm going to join together my two pieces of binding. I am going to like find the center and align it with the center here so that way I'll have the extra pieces sticking off when I join it onto the crown. I can use those pieces to then bind the crown part as well but I can do this part flat ideally maybe entirely on the machine probably one side machine one side by hand and I think that will be a lot easier so fingers crossed so this is what that looks like by just stitching it wrong sides together on the brim and then I have pressed it I haven't stitched it yet on this side but you can see it looks pretty clean the roughest place was around these curves because they're pretty steep curves I probably just needed to have allowed a little bit more binding there like eased it in this side did a lot better on the corner so I don't know why one was better than the other but yeah so that is that so far and then I've also started prepping the crown top here so something that I did differently this time that's not in the instructions but I wanted to give it a try is that I took that little circle that I had thrown away earlier and I actually like put it on here while this was still flat and pinned it to the fabric and buckram because buckram's in there too and stitched that line so you see that stitch line right there I did it while this was pinned to it like on the edge of the paper and that way I would have a better idea of where exactly it needs to fold because I tend to have a hard time fitting crown tops into the crowns so I thought that'd give me a good idea then I cut all of my crenellations and just kind of bent that and so that's where we are right now now we have to prep the crown pieces so I think I'm going to go back to the instructions for this one and try to do it how it says I know the first thing is to press down one of these sides I think it's by a quarter inch but I'll double check and then we take the buckram piece and put that like there-ish I don't know why this looks like it does not fit okay well I'll figure this out when I'm you know not holding a camera in my hand but we take that buckram piece and then something gets folded and yeah I have to read those instructions a little more thoroughly so yeah you lay a little bit of glue right along the edge down there and then just finger press all of that up and over the glue luckily I don't think any of it really showed through the other side I do wonder why it is so deep like that seems really deep and lots of excess because it's a curve so whatever then you glue the tab underneath and now what's going to happen is a little more hand sewing because this gets brought over this and then I hand sew that closed. So I really thought that stitching that circle line in would help but as per usual I'm having a really impossible time fitting the crown into the or crown top into the crown. I don't know what it is about me with millinery I seem to always have this problem so I doubt it's this pattern especially since you know I did change things with this but uh, yeah it's not working so I am gonna have to I guess cut my little crenellations in a little deeper and hope I don't cut them too deep because that's way too big to fit in there right now. The crown part is now complete I've got all my little hand stitches all around up there and down here I actually did not wind up having to like go past where that circle is that circle was exactly right it was just that I hadn't cut my notches quite all the way up to the circle and I recommend cutting that in your buckram all the way up to the circle but not in your taffeta well especially because taffeta frays but yeah I basically left a little bit extra of the taffeta but cut all the way up in the buckram so the buckram could really like shape and then in here here I glued these tabs to the inside to give that just that little bit more structure so you can see it's really quite sturdy here on the back. So now we are going back over to our brim and the one other thing that I hadn't done before I'm still a little worried that this is like not super functional but the one other thing I hadn't done before was right at this line right here where the edge of the buckram is we want to stitch this just base this on the machine so that this is all pocketed right in there and it's not going to shift anywhere I mean it's really not anyway because we've already sewn it down down here but we don't want the rest of this brim to shift either so where we basted that line just now we then pin 
the crown onto that line, like just covering that line, matching up the edges in the back here, which I've used with the clips. So now that's supposed to get hand stitched on the outside and then this like excess is supposed to get glued on the inside. Frankly, if this was real millinery, this buckram portion that's here should have extended up into here. We cut it with little crenellations and it gets, you know, glued or whatever method to the inside as well, because that's going to provide more structure. Hopefully we'll have enough structure here. I mean, it is a doll bonnet. It's not like it has to be too functional, but yeah, that's how it should be. So for the lining now, I have pressed up the bottom edge one quarter inch and then done the seam in the back. Now is what I remember to be the tricky part from the other bonnet, which is that the top of the crown has to get attached into here. And we do this with like right sides together and easing it around and matching up the little notches, but I remember it being very challenging, so be prepared for that. One other thing to note that is that I used the friction pen like normal to trace around these pieces, and it actually wound up transferring the ink from the printer pages to this. I don't feel like I've had this happen, at least recently, and it's probably just that I switched to like off-brand ink, but just something to keep in mind. So that was somehow way better than the other one. I don't know if it's just that I now have experience, but it still definitely was fiddly, but I got it on pretty easily. So now we are going to put some glue down in here and right around here and put the lining inside the crown. I decided to actually follow the directions and I'm going to hand sew the lining in there. So with the lining now glued into the bottom but pinned in around there, and all of the bias on, which included having to hand sew this edge of the bias here. Sorry about my awful nail polish, but hand sewing there just because you can't get that under a machine. And then now it's time to hand sew all of the rest of the bias on plus around the lining and then it will be time to decorate. And here is what it looks like with everything stitched in place. So let's go ahead and decorate. Hi Lion! And on top of this absolute pile of trims, the bonnet is done. So all of these trims are glued on, but there's not actually much glue on the bonnet itself. Basically, I glued this band on first, which has been in my stash for forever. And then I glued this little bouquet together with the feather and all of the flowers, and then glued that bouquet onto the band and glued the bows onto the bouquet or onto the band on this side. I had a hard time choosing ribbon because of the shot silk. So that's why I went with the double bows, because I felt like that that picked up the colors of the bonnet but also the dress really well and then I went and I gathered this trim on the inside this was just in my stash like a little cut off piece it was a couple inches longer than this but they were staining on the last inches and then I just glued that around the inside so let's go put it on Yvette and we'll see the finished look here is the finished look on Yvette I really do like this style of dress though I do need to make her a petticoat I love this sleeve option I'm very glad that I chose this sleeve option because I think it looks super, super cute. I do, again, wish that the lace was longer. I think if I were to make this again, I would either apply the lace last or just use much, much wider lace, like maybe even a full inch wide because I think it's just too narrow. I love the lace peeking out from behind her hair in the bonnet. I think I went with the exact right width of lace for that. And then the bonnet itself is so cute. I actually really like the use of colors and textures and stuff in the trimming that I decided to go with. I was really not sure about that, but this is how I pin her bonnet on, by the way. I just use like little straight pins and stick them in like they're little hat pins. You can see the back. I will probably fix that one snap so that it actually grabs the exterior of the fabric and that way we don't see the lining right there. But very, very cute. I'm definitely pleased with how she turned out. I do want to mention that while this dress went together super, super quickly and easily and like, you know, I put it together in what, I think that was like five and a half hours or something. I don't remember the exact total, but that went together so quickly. The bonnet was the opposite. So I've actually been working on the bonnet for like a few days now and it's a lot of hand sewing, not that much gluing, which is surprising for me, but it's a lot of hand sewing to do a bonnet and it's very fiddly when it's so small. I mean, there's obviously less than a human sized bonnet, but it is just a lot of hand sewing. And then of course I covered up one of the things of hand sewing with the trimming on the back here. So, oh well. But yeah, it was overall a really great pattern, uh, both patterns, because they are two separate patterns. I will link those patterns down below if you're interested. 
and thank you to Pemberley Threads for gifting those patterns to me by the way too. This isn't like sponsored or anything, I just really like their patterns and they were kind enough to gift these ones to me. And yeah, I'm excited to make more for Yvette because I really have enjoyed making her like her own historical fashions that she can dress up in that are me made. So anyway, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you liked this video, please go ahead and click the thumbs up icon. And if you'd like to see more videos like this from me, please go ahead and click subscribe and the little bell icon to be notified every time I post a new video. I do post videos here on YouTube at least once a week with my sewing vlogs like this out on Tuesdays and other costuming content sometimes out on Saturdays, but I post every day over on my Instagram, so please go follow me on Instagram. That's at Lady Rebecca Fashions. And if you'd like to help support all of the work that I do on this channel, I do have a link to my Patreon and my Kofi down in the description below, or you can send me a super thanks right here on YouTube. I'd also like to give a special shout out to my Edwardian level patrons, Sharon, Mirage, Laura, and Jean. Thank you all so, so much for joining me today. I hope you all have a wonderful week, and I will see you very soon in my next video. Happy sewing!